Hey there, and welcome to episode two of Exploring and Churchin' by the Cooking Camper. I am here with Zena the Glamper Camper, and we are just going to flip to a random page in the Bible, start reading and talking. So, let's flip to a random page. We ended on Ecclesiastes. I'm reading out of the NIV version of the Bible. Fulfill your vow to God. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near and listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know what they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. A dream comes when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. Well, if we just talk about Ecclesiastes 5, 1 through 3 so far, I am probably a fool because I've got many words. So I am definitely going to be working on that. But it's, it's hard to speak less and listen more. But really, I think that most of us need to work on that. Let's keep going. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Now, I totally agree with Ecclesiastes 5.5. 5. It's better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. You got to under, under promise, over deliver. You do not want to over promise and under deliver. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And do not protest to the temple messenger why my vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. Riches are meaningless. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. To me, that sounds kind of like taxes. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This, too, is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet when they lay when they eat little or much, but as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. So, if you just want to talk about 10, 11, and 12, I mean, you could get really deep with that. Sometimes I think, and I definitely get into this mindset of more money, more stuff will makes me happy, but literally just Google it. You're going to be happy for a couple of months or a couple of weeks, and then you're going to want something else. So eventually... I'm trying to live being satisfied with what I have, being satisfied with what I've been given. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners, or wealth lost through time, some misfortune. So that, or, or wealth lost through some misfortune. So that when they have children, there's nothing left for them to inherit. Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and everyone comes so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry into their hand, that they can carry in their hands. This too is a grievous evil. As everyone comes, so they depart, and what do they gain since they toil for the wind? All their days they eat in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. This is what I have observed to be good. What it is that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toil some labor under the sun during the few days of life god has given them for this is their lot moreover when god gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them to accept their lot and to be happy in their toil this is a gift from god they seldom reflect on the days of their life because god keeps them occupied with gladness of heart so that was ecclesiastes chapter 5 I really liked that. It makes you definitely, definitely, definitely think. So I just want to pray real fast. Dear God, 
Ecclesiastes 5.19 says, Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot, and to be happy in their toil, this is a gift from God. And God, I am so, so, so grateful for all of the gifts that you have given to me, my family, to Zena, to everyone in our lives. And we just pray that all of your children everywhere can start to become happy with what they are given and what they are blessed with. We are in a beautiful park right now. Me and Zena and Mr. Cameraman are in R Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And you created this, God. It's absolutely beautiful. We pray that all of your children can um, learn to love and learn to um, appreciate everything that you have given us on this earth. We pray this in your beautiful, ever-creating name. Amen. So, yeah, that's what this series is going to be about. We're just going to flip to a random page, read and talk. So this is the second episode, and I'm pretty sure now, after this one, I'm pretty sure they're going to be called Explorin' and Churchin' by the Cook and Camper. I think that's kind of cute. And... Hopefully, Z she wasn't in the first one, but hopefully Zena will be in more to come so that you guys can see how cute she is. I mean, God has blessed Zena with some good looks, hasn't he? Well, if you liked this video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you see the next time me and Zena upload a new video. Get out and enjoy what God has given us, and get out and enjoy nature and food as much as we do. Have a great one.